All right, we've got a firecracker of a series here between Benbe and PokeAimMD, otherwise known as Joey. So, our lead matchup is Deoxys Attack versus Darkrai. Uh, this is an interesting one, because if it is Scarf Darkrai, then it will Dark Void and break DOA's Sash before DOA can respond with Spikes or Superpower or anything. Uh, it'll break the Sash with Bad Dreams. And uh, then the Darkrai will be forced to switch, so DOA might try to, you know, wake up, but it'll... Uh, you know, it's not exactly in its favor. And uh, with how frail it is and how common priority from things like Giratina O and Scizor are, then it might get chased out real quick. So, without doing anything. So, if you have a Scarf Dark Rye, you enjoy seeing this matchup. Because even if Benbei switches out and goes to a Sleep Talker, that Sleep Talker is still going to be afflicted by bad dreams, and DOA is not exactly going to relish the prospect of switching in later in the game, given its immense frailty. So... Uh, if you don't have a Scarf on your Darkrai, then you still just Dark Void, uh, same thing applies. And uh, yeah, DOA might uh, superpower you or get up spikes, but then you are a Darkrai that can still annoy the opponent. Like, lead status, or a dual status lead Darkrai is quite good. As you Dark Void something, then you T-Wave something else, or Will-O-Wisp something else on the Switch, and you're generally a pain. So... Uh, you will, if you're not running a Scarf Lee, then you're generally going to run something like Chopple, which helps you beat T-Tar, or, you know, even Sash, if you're trying to mess with Kyogre, and, uh, you know, running Thunder or something. So, uh, either way, Darkrai is not going down on this first turn, and it's going to use Dark Void, and, uh, whether Benbei stays in or switches out, and if he stays in, what move he uses, it all depends. So let's see what choices these players have made in the team builder and in the battle. So, uh, DOA goes first with Spikes, so that is not a Scarf Darkrai, and Dark Void connects, so there goes the Sash, thanks to Bad Dreams. And now, the question is, is Joey just going to attack, or is he going to try and pull that dual status Darkrai fun? Uh, well, and uh, what is, uh, or does he switch uh, to something like a Dialga and get his own hazards up? So he's uh, matching the hazard game as soon as possible. Lots of options. And uh, with Benbei, the question is, you know, what does he switch to? Uh, turns out, he does not switch to anything, and Dark Ride just Dark Pulses, and down it goes, and 6-5 Joey. So, I, I get the idea, that, that looked like a very silly play from Benbei there, but I get the idea totally, because lead, uh, if you're running an offensive team like the ones that uh, DOA leads off on, then you are not going to love switching into a T-waving Dark Ride. and I think that's what he feared. He feared a Dark Ride that was going to T-wave, uh, you know, the Jirachi switch or something the Scarf Jirachi switch at that, and then he would be really far behind. So it was a risky play, but potential uh, upside was you burn a sleep turn with DOA and uh, making it, you know, more possible for it to... Because it was never going to wake up if it didn't burn that sleep turn. All uh, right, there. And you also provoke Darkrai into attacking uh, on the next turn, so then you get your switch on the Dark Pulse. Uh, so, uh, because you don't want the, as the Dark Rye, you know, if they stay in, you're not going to say, you're, I mean, you could also see through that potentially and say, oh, well, it, they're not going to do that again, because uh, now I'm, you know, provoked in, into attacking because I don't want the sleep to run out and my Dark Rye to have essentially done nothing to the Deoxys, so you could still go for that status again, but you would be uh, more under pressure to go for the attack, so... Uh, but yeah, Joey just played it straight and pulsed. He might not even be double status. He might uh, be Thunder for Kyogre. So uh, I understand what was going on there uh, from Ben Bay. I don't want to call that a bad play at all. Uh, so Palkia comes in. Uh, is it, you know, sl Scarf or Sleep Talk? Well, if it is Scarf, it's not KOing Darkrai without Draco Meteor. And the Darkrai could be Sash. So again, let's see what choices these players have made. Dark Void. Oh, he actually goes first. So it is not a Scarf Palkia. Uh, could we be seeing the rare Lumpalkia? I love Lumpalkia. It's really good. Shrugging off Thunder Paras and T-Waves and Will-O-Wisps and, uh, well, even Dark Voids is really valuable. And uh, if it has T-Wave or something, then that Dark Rye would be ruined, because Lum on Dark Rye is not nearly as common in the lead slot. Mid-game, yes, to shrug off T-Spikes, but not in the lead slot. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to assume that this is... Lum is rare, though, so I'm going to assume this is like Sleep Talk Specs or something. And, uh, no, it's Trick Room! That's very cool! I don't know if it's Lum Trick Room, because Trick Room Palkia is really rare. I mean, it's potentially devastating, especially alongside its best friend, uh, Trick Room Diago, which is almost set, definitely coming in. And uh, Palkia also has great special bulk, and uh, so it could shrug off some Dark Rite attacks. But, you know, the item choice, you know, Lustrous Orb, Life Orb, 
white herb if you're running Draco Meteor. Well, that's more a Dialga thing, but uh, it could be Lumberry Trick Room, put it that way. So now the Darkrai, well, it's still, a, well, let's pull out the damage cow because I'm a bit rusty on Lustrous Palkia versus uh, Darkrai. All right, yeah, it's, it's still not KOing. Darkrai is deceptively bulky. You're doing, uh, I mean, with an absolute max damage roll, yes, but... Uh, fun fact, with 4 Special Defense, Darkrai will never be KO'd by Lustrous or Palkia Spatial Rend. So run 4 Special Defense on your Darkrai, now you know what it's good for. Anyway, so I assume uh, AIM is probably going to stay in, and Spatial Rend does not come close to KOing, so that is definitely not Lustrous or boosted, so could assume Lum. There's the Dark Void, and there is, in fact, the Lum. So... Uh, he, he hit two or three Dark Voids, so that's hard to complain. And uh, he's not too worried about it. I mean, arguably, maybe he should have just gone right to this Blissey immediately. But uh, that's not a common combination. I always enjoy when I see Blissey alongside super offensive pokes that you don't usually see it on. And matter of fact, I really like Darkrai there, because Darkrai will uh, disable something on the opposing team. And, uh, you know, just leave them scrambling for answers, and that makes Blissey's defensive duty so much better, you know, as opposed to when it's, you know, trying to wall everything. And just falling back on the offensive Pokemon that are trying to out-offense Darkrai uh, makes it much more reliable. So, uh, case in point, uh, Blissey comes in and uh, goes for a Toxic uh, with the Lum burned. Uh, then it would have ruined Palkia if it had tried to go for... An outrage, and uh, if fun fact, Blissey would actually be uh, faster in Trick Room, so it could soft boil. Well, it would still be left at low health, but that could be something uh, crucial to note for later, because I'm pretty sure that Palkia can't. Yeah, 184. Yeah, Palkia and Dialga. Well, Dialga's even slower, but uh, I'm pretty sure that they can't outslow uh, Blissey under Trick Room, thereby outspeed. So yeah, the Toxic uh, going for that first, as opposed to Rocks, if it is his Rocker. And he catches Rayquaza, which is good, and that does not have a Lumberry, so putting that on a timer is nice. So, uh, Darkrai could have been preserved, I think, but it wasn't a bad move to try and go for it, because Lum is not automatic on Scarf Palkia. You can, you know, insinuate, you can uh, kind of infer it, but you can't really blame someone for going for it. Uh, Darkrai could still be useful later, but it's not like it's going to switch in on attacks from a heavy-hitting team anyway, so it's really going to only come in in revenge. So, in that sense, uh... In that sense, that might even uh, not matter as much, and in fact, it might even help because you burn a turn of Trick Room, and when you then uh, the you know big Trick Room wall breaker is going to come in on the Blissey, and then it has one less turn because you stayed in with Dark Ride to burn a turn. So, matter of fact, that's really good, and you know now maybe you can Dark Void the Palkia with Dark Ride later. So you know I take it back. That was a good move, uh, staying in with the Dark Ride. It uh it has a lot of potential applications, and the you know downsides of. Losing health on Darkrai are, you know, I don't think they outweigh the upsides. So anyway, Ray's in. It's poisoned. We still got a turn of Trick Room left. This is the last turn. Blissey's gonna, you know, outspeed, but I don't think it really wants to stay in. I guess that you could pop up rocks if you're... But I don't know. There's there's Trick Room Palk, and all, there's definitely a Trick Room Diog in the back. And potentially stuff like Kyogre, so... I think you're going to want to hold on to Bliss. Uh, a Steel, you know, now would be a good time for it to switch in. You could sack Darkrai, theoretically, if you wanted to just get a free switch and didn't think it was going to be yep there's the dark rye sack so and yeah losing health on the dark rye there did not help uh or did not you know really make much of a difference and in fact uh you know it was fine because again burned a turn to trick room staying in on the next turn so now the trick room has worn off and you can revenge ray in peace so yeah good move uh yeah here comes latias and it fires off a draco and this offensive trick room team does not have a bronze on and so it cannot sw up because you know it didn't switch in there uh where it would have been a prime example and uh yeah so down goes ray and in comes dialga so hey this is an all special trick room dialga which i would say is most of them you know trick room draco fire blast and then dragon pulse or thunder uh or, you know, theoretically something like Brick Break, but th those are the most common historically. Uh, I mean, you can run Adamant Orb Outrage for sure, uh, in which case it's just like a regular mixed Dialga that can also Trick Room for, you know, a regular mixed Dialga that rips through stall, and but it can also Trick Room and break past offense. It's one of the things that makes Dialga so great. Uh, <laughs> just one of the many things, in fact. Anyway, so uh, it doesn't want to, the Trick Room Dialga does not want to switch into a Latias Dragon move, 
Uh, it wants to stay healthy for its setup, but now it can uh, just fire off attacks. I don't even think it needs a Trick Room, really, because that's not going to help it against Blissey. If anything, you just make the Blissey faster for a few turns. Uh, you know, it would probably be better to just attack. And now Diog is at full health and Lottie is at minus two, so it probably does not want to stay in. So, uh, Joey goes to Groudon and eats the Draco, so that is a big, big hit. So, Lefty, so that is a physically defensive Groudon, that's the standard assumption. Uh, probably his rocker, but the that's a good move because against mixed Dialga, normally you are not going to want to just chuck your ground on there, but because he knows it's a trick room set, then he knows he's going to be faster so he can get up rocks and he can weaken it with uh, by forcing it to use Draco. And, uh, you know, otherwise it's really not probably not going to hurt anything too much without... It's not going to hurt Groudon as, uh, nearly as much without Draco Wing, so... He might lose his Groudon, but he'll get the rocks. And uh, Benbei's not even going to uh, stay in with Dialga. Instead, he goes to his own Groudon, which is a great uh, Trick Room... Well, I mean, it, it functions outside of Trick Room. Part of the great things about Uber's Trick Room stuff is that they're just great Pokémon outside of Trick Room as well, but ha being under Trick Room is... Uh, what make really launches them past the more offensive teams, whereas they otherwise might struggle. It's a great way to circumvent. It re really like flip the whole. The tier has such a you know speed kills dynamic where you're just constantly revenge killing one fast Pokemon with a faster Pokemon, and then they do the same to you, and it goes back and forth. And Trick Room really flips that on its head because suddenly there is no I have a faster Pokemon than you because my uh, I'm running Scarf Mewtwo. So. so. It's a, it's a very cool way to do it. And uh, it's not like, uh, you know, in other tiers, in Trick Room teams always have the question, oh, how am I going to break defensive teams that don't care about uh, my, you know, speed reversal thing? And, you know, that's why you have a big guns like Mixed Dialga and, you know, Groudon and, you know, potentially even Palkia if you want to go there. And Rayquaza, of course, who are pretty much unwallable. So, yeah, uh, good team style. I hope we see more of them in this tournament. Anyway, Groudon comes in and we don't know, does it want to SD? Does it just want to attack? Uh, you know, probably can't set up super safely on Joey's Groudon because it might have Roar, but it might try it anyway. Oh, he's just going to go right to Latias. Oh, there aren't even... Uh, that's a great move, that Dragon Claw, and it does a lot of damage, so it looks like a very... Well, it's obviously a max attack Groudon, but it doesn't have Life Orb, so it looks like a more often, uh, special attack invested uh, Latias. And uh, another nice thing about Trick Room Pokes is when you get have the luxury of running max attack and max HP, you obviously you know you have to use trick room for it to be of worth but you also uh, have the ability to tank hits like uh you know from full health like all the draco meteors in this tier so joey had the right idea you know he's not a uh, with rocks not up then he can switch latias in and out of battle pretty nicely but uh, ben bay made a great move there by going for dragon claw so now the prospect of draco meteor is staring down this grad on and I don't think uh, he had. I don't think Benbei has any choice but to go, or but to stay in. Well, I mean, he doesn't have any choice to, to, but to stay in or to sacrifice something because he uh, has, as he has shown already, he does not really have a Draco Meteor switch in. So yeah, let's see. Max. Okay, so Max uh, HP Groudon is going to live a Draco Meteor, but we don't know that Joey's Gladius does not have Grass Knot, as is very common. Uh, hitting Groudon and Kyogre in the same move is really good. You know, much harder than Draco without the drop, and you also smack Titar around real nice. So, uh, oh, and it's well, that uh, catches everyone by surprise. Because that is a Scarf Groudon. It's not Quick Claw. That would have activated. So, I mean, Scarf Groudon is rare as it is. Really cool set, but it's very rare. But Scarf Groudon on a Trick Room team. Uh, yeah, there's uh, there's no accounting for that. So, now here... Well, on the downside, you know, it gets rid of the Latias, which is really helpful considering it was threatening some more Draco bombing. Uh, but now Dialga comes in, and as we've established, Ben Bay does not have a Draco switch in, nor does uh, he possess the capacity to threaten Dialga on this turn. So he's gonna give up, have to give up something here. So yep, here comes Palkia. He's gonna try and minus two it, and then I assume go back to the Groudon, because uh, you know he's gonna challenge Joey. Joey's got kind of an unusual team structure here, because he's got like this you know, bulky offense thing with the Blissey. Um, uh, which is not the most unusual thing, but you don't really see a lot of it. And it makes it, it what makes it different is that you, it makes it harder to predict the last. 
you know, because there's no uh, dragon resist here. And you can say, oh, Blissey's a dragon resist, and Groudon can uh, be the quote unquote resist against Outrage. But, you know, in this late game situation with the Latias down, like, there's no other ground. If there's no other ground resist, then Scarf Groudon might threaten to clean here, assuming this Dialga isn't Shuka or something. So, uh, but no, he doesn't go to Groudon again. He uh, goes to Dialga. So, is he going to try and set up the Trick Room here? Uh, maybe he's assuming, you know, Scarf Dialga not threatening. He can save his Groudon for later. He wants to, maybe he wants to clean up with Groudon and he wants to... Uh, I mean, it's one way or the other. He wants to uh, cl weaken with one of Dialga or Groudon and then clean up with the other. And it's also hard to say what the last might be from him. I would... You know, venture something like a Kyogre. But, uh... I did watch this series live, but I really don't remember what the last is. All I remember is that the ending was a... was really riotous. <laughs> so, uh, the Trick Room goes off. And... Yeah, because, I mean, there are so many options that could be used here. All all we know from Benbei's side is that it's not going to be a good switch into Draco Meteor. Or even a decent switch into Draco Meteor. So... And uh, from Joey's side, you would... It's also tough to say, because... You know, it's unusual, because with Joey's team, you're re I'm assuming it's going to be something, like, more aggressive. Because right now, he, j he has a bunch of good Pokemon together, but not much of a super cohesive offensive attack. And I'm assuming that that's the void the last Pokemon fills. Especially because, uh, assuming his Dialga is Scarf... I mean, I guess it could fees. I don't think it's mixed because if it was mixed, I think he would have stayed in on the Trick Room Dialga, and um, he would have stayed on the Trick Room Dialga and just attacked it uh, to not give it the Trick Room for free. Uh, matter of fact, I think he might have even wanted to do that even with the Scarf Dialga. Just, I mean, minus two Draco is still going to stick to it because it. I don't think it has a has it shown lefties at all. I'm checking the log now. Well, it hasn't shown, uh, I mean, it might be lefties, it might not, but I think Dracoing again would have been fine, because it can't exactly punish you in any way besides Trick Room, and, you know, it's, uh, you're gonna sack Groudon anyway, so you would have gotten more damage, and, uh, the Diago would have taken more damage. The Diago would have taken more damage, and you would have burned Trina Trick Room, so I think Dracoing again would have been fine. But yeah, since the Diago on Joey's side is probably Scarf, then I assume the last is going to be something more aggressive. Preferably with some bulk, like Kyogre, so it can take on, you know, miscellaneous uh, stuff like Garchomp. You know, maybe Mewtwo. A lot of options. Anyway, so Trick Room goes off. Groudon's going to get sacrificed. Oh, and uh, Joey switches to Blissey on the Draco. Nice. <sighs> that Draco does a lot. I think that's Adamant Orb. Matter of fact, that's got to be Adamant Orb. 34 with Draco. Yeah, that's 100% Adamant Orb. So... Uh, Blissey is now slower into Trick Room, so it's going to soft boil. So the question is, does that have a good, uh, so I guess, I mean, I guess he could have still draco and then switched to Blissey, because he switched, uh, from Groudon into Bliss, and more damage on the Diago would have been nice. But, uh, now he knows that the Diago is Adamant Orb and not Lum, so he can, uh, well, I don't think, unless he's, like, got Scarf T-Wave Diago, like we saw in that other series, then... It might not matter, but yeah. So Blissey uh, goes first, soft boils, and the Diaga does have outrage. So uh, yeah, this I, I, on a trick room team like this, you want to be as good against defensive stuff as possible. You can't just be giving it up to Blissey uh, plus a physical wall, and that's what Diaga does. And that outrage is really ripping through it. And uh, so, poof, so there goes the uh, out. God, that's doing a lot of damage in the 60s. So, now it's confused, and it goes first, so we know it didn't use Trick Room, because Trick Room is negative priority. And uh, Joey's off-boiled again, so at 50-50, and uh, it goes Joey's way, so afterwards, who knows what would have been done. It, and I think it really would have been helpful to have that minus two Draco on the Dialga, because it would have... Uh, made it easier to revenge kill it with the Diaga, you know, with the regular Draco Meteor. So, there's a T- so dual status Blissey, you don't see that very often. Uh, and now, the Diaga does go for Trick Room, whereas it didn't before. As uh, Blissey, you saw Blissey went first on that turn. See, it confused, then soft-boiled, 
Oh, well, he was trying to outrage there. Um, so that's why he was trying to finish it off. But uh, yeah, now Blissey goes for T Wave and Diaga Trick Rooms. So uh, yeah, now the question is, uh, yeah, can uh, can Ben Bay break through the para and conf the para fusion to uh, outrage Blissey down? But uh, not quite. It's just just out of range of uh, yeah that one confusion turn. And he's doing 58 to 64, it's looking like, the roll is. And, yeah, Blissey's going to be stalling it out now. Well, not guaranteed, very, uh, good odds, you know, once that first confusion went off. You know, he, in, but he also got the three turns, so. Anyway, here comes the Scarf Groudon. Problem is that uh, Blissey can soft -willed scout this. But, does that matter? Because he's not going to PP stall. He's got a... He's already, yeah, he's already uh, burned half his soft wields dealing with the Dialga. So he's not going to PP stall this, uh, uh, this, this thing's EQs. And uh, if he doesn't have another Draco answer, then... Or, sorry, EQ answer. But he does. He has Tina O. And uh, that's going to make things really hard. Because Ben Bay can't switch into Draco. We don't know the last. But we can assume it's slow. And so it's going to get hit before it goes down, before uh, it sets up. And then it's got to make its way through uh, Blissey and Diaga and a healthy Giratina. Uh, and there's also Groudon to, you know, burn a turn of Trick Room. So it's looking very much like... And uh, Joey makes a great move in EQs, so he does not minus two himself with Draco, needlessly. As in, uh, that would also take out a Diaga sack, but Benbe sacks Groudon. Uh, good move, because... Yeah, I mean, it's a minuscule detail, but it's important because Diaga can still potentially be useful under Trick Room, whereas Groudon is not, and it can't kill everything because, you know, it has to lock into a move. So that was definitely the correct choice on which Pokemon to sack, so nice work there. And in comes Diaga again. I, it's not going to live this. I think he's trying to provoke a minus... He's well, I thought he was, I was going to say he's trying to provoke a Draco Meteor so he can set up on the minus two, but he winds up provoking an Outrage, whose Grissius or Boost uh, help finishes him off, and he does not reveal the last. So I, you know, assume it's something else that really did not want to uh, take a Dragon move at all, or he just, you know, maybe it was just something that he knew it wasn't going to clean up with uh, Blissey and Diaga in full health, Tina. So, uh, yeah. Let's move on to game two. DOS this time, and Joey's got a cloister. So, Shadow Ball, that's the move to... Well, okay, so that's interesting, because against Dio, uh, against Cloister, then now with them running spin more than... Because before you would just, like, if you wanted to taunt, you could taunt. If you had a bulky DOS. But otherwise, you would just stack hazards, because you would get rocks and a bunch of spikes. And yeah, they'd get spikes and maybe T-spikes, but you'd also have rocks and... With uh, with your Tina O and Diaga, you could follow up, and you would minimize the impact of T spikes and spikes. So there's spikes and T spikes rather. Uh, but now he's just going. He's trying to you know bring it down with Shadow Ball, which does a lot of damage. So and uh, Joey goes for a payback, and it looks like he's uh, he's going to be in range of Ice Shard. So now we have some interesting mind games. Does Joey go for the Ice Shard, trying to finish? Uh, I, I mean, the stakes are pretty clear. Joey want, would like to Ice Shard to finish off the DOS if it stays in, but he'd also like some hazards, but he also doesn't want to get KO'd. What you can do here is, by staying in with both players, then you, as both players stay in, then they ensure that the other will not, well, DOS can ensure the Cloister will not get hazards by going for Shadow Ball, uh, while Cloister can ensure the DOS won't get hazards by going for Ice Shard. And, uh, you know, by switching out, then, you know, you kind of potentially give yourself, uh, give the other player the opportunity to get up those hazards. And uh, it's going to be tough to get those hazards again if you switch out. Uh, but the Cloister holds the pot, the more direct possibility of getting the KO because it goes first here. So it's an interesting dynamic. And what is done? Spikes from uh, Benbe and spikes from AIM. So... Both players decide, all right, the other, you know, uh, well, no, Benbei decided Cloister is not switching. There's no universe in which Cloister switches there. It's Spikes or Shard. For Benbei, it was um, Shadow Ball, Spikes, or Switch. So, uh, yeah, now the question is, is he going to switch again? 
Or is he just daring him to not have Ice Shard? Nope, he stays in. He decides, all right, I'm going to limit any potential spin or any such nonsense. And uh, now here comes Palkia, and it misses Spatial Rend, and Cloyster gets a spin off, and that's br that's really brutal. That's that's a that's the worst kind of a uh, uh, that's a that's a pretty bad form of luck when you miss the 95 and they get the spin off. That's uh, how Pokemon can be really silly sometimes. So uh, it, you know the spatial rend uh, takes out the cloister, but it got the spin off and it got a spike down. So that was definitely a victory. And now Diago comes in with uh, at full health, momentum on its side, going to get up rocks to complement. Oh no, it's just kind of Dragon Pulse. Not quite doing, uh, you know, specs damage, doing an okay chunk with the crit. And uh, that's definitely going to put it ahead. Both players get up rocks. So that, that was a nice move from Joey. I, I like that move because if Palky, he ensured, I mean, throwing out a Dragon Pulse is never bad. And Diago sets up rocks on so much, it's not like he's in any rush to. And if Palkia went for the kind of cheap shot play that's become, not cheap shot, but... Uh, you know, just the attacking Dialga as it rocks play, which is becoming so popular with uh, with Dialga rocking all over the place, then he would take Palkia out. Or, you know, see if it was Habin or something. And, uh, you know, he would, potentially, he would potentially take Palkia out if it wasn't Habin. And uh, he would, you know, damage something worst case. And he could still get up rocks afterwards. So, a uh, good heads-up play. And... Uh, most of the time, Diog is going to come in and get up rocks anyway. So you can just get up your rocks after. So very, very measured play from Joey there. And uh, he decides to not get into a Dragon Pulse uh, uh, contest. And he roars Benbei out, trying to scout some more of his team. And he drags in Tina O. So we've got this Sinnoh trio here. Lovely. And uh, Tina does not want to stay in on that healthy Diaga. Uh, incidentally, this is why I really love Draco Meteor, but then again, he wouldn't have been able to Draco so freely early on. So, we had being able to threaten a Draco KO there, but he decides, I want to preserve uh, Tina's health. So, whereas Joey just goes for the Dragon Pulse, and uh, Benbei sacks his Diaga. So, Joey's Diaga is still at full health, which is, or not full health, but very high health. But, uh, this is what Darkrai is great at. Uh, with the sleep, then you kind of rest control back of a match. And by disabling something so brutally, and then you still attack it, are incredibly difficult to switch into. Darkrai is really just an incredible Pokemon. So, uh, and situations like this, it's a big part of a comeback machine, or a comeback attempt. And there's the Void, and uh, not only is Dialga, you know, potentially out of the picture now, but it's even losing health passively through bad dreams. It's not like it uh, even gets to heal. So, uh, now Kyogre comes in. And what's Darker going to do? Focus. Oh, Nasty Plot. Nice. Okay, so he, uh, he was not going to get walled by, you know, a Groudon or something switching in. But uh, with Kyogre here, it's potentially Scarf. And Palkia is at 64 with Rocks and Spikes. And Tina O is not a very confident switch in either. And Dialga is down. So Kyogre is looking threatening, you know, either way here. So, uh, and he just goes for a Water Spout. Which is still gonna, you know, significantly outdamage Surf, and uh, down goes Darkrai. He was hoping look, that's not a Scarf Kyogre, but it is. I mean, he doesn't exactly have much choice. But here comes Latios. So he's got a lot of a, uh, you know, he, it wouldn't have been a confident switch in there, but he couldn't, you know, exactly afford to just switch around. At this point of the game, he has to attack because uh, he's quite behind. I mean, the not having spikes did hurt. But even without those, then, you know, Diaga and Kyogre are posing quite a threat, uh, you know, even if he did have the spike. So, and uh, Latios is going to likely choose something here. Yep, it's not like uh, he has a lot of, uh, he's going to be running an offensive team that is eager to switch into Latios. I mean, even if he has a Scizor or something, no sense in switching it directly into a Thunder, potentially. And you can sack the Sleeping Diaga, and it's not like he has a Darkrai anymore, so you should sack the Sleep Fodder, easily the least valuable poke. And uh, now you can go to whatever easily. And he goes to uh, Tina O, and that's a great move, even though Tina O's Shadow Seek is not going to KO Latios, but it is going to put it in Scarf Kyogre Ice Beam range. And then the remaining pokes are a Palkia that can barely take it, and a Tina O that can barely take it. So you're going to, uh, with this numerical advantage, that is definitely the right move. And uh, Sneak is going to Sneak, Pulse, down it goes, in comes Kyogre again, firing off an Ice Beam, and Latios has no choice but to go down. So, uh, in comes the Palk, which we know is... Well, actually, we don't know if it's a Scarf or not. But uh, it's sa pretty safe to assume it is, because it's not a Scarf Rye, you know, not a Scarf Dialga. 
and uh, Giratina and Latios can't be uh, Scarf because of their items. So not not to say you need a Scarf, but it probably is. And it is going to be a uh, Scarf as the Thunder goes off first, brings Kyogre down to five, and yikes. Well, that uh, that n well, so earlier the idea of uh, the idea of what's it called, Scarf or the spin on the spatial red mist not mattering it was you know diago was still big and so was kyogre but uh the not having to deal with spikes meant that kyogre lived that thunder and it used that live uh, or that survival to get off uh the ice beam and uh and uh freeze the palkia and so that's uh that's really rough <laughs> yeah um so uh here's where joey made a mistake uh he sh he goes to grout on and uh, he's going to just, uh, which is, you know, fine. Now, the thing is, even if that Palkia didn't freeze, it being locked into Thunder and there being a Groudon left, it was, you know, potentially fine. But uh, jo as Joey goes for a Rock Polish, because he wasn't going to give that uh, Kyogre... Uh, now, if Joey had stayed in and just spammed Ice Beam and taken advantage of the freeze, that would have been fine. But uh, And he acknowledges this. Uh, he acknowledged it like as soon as the battle was over, and I I haven't seen his video yet, but uh, I think he did that in the video as well. So yeah, so now he goes for um, now he goes to Groudon, and he rock polishes and Life Orb Dragon Claws, and it does not a lot because that that is a bulky Giratina, and the thing is that Kyogre is now down to um, what's it called uh, hazards, and. Uh, so his last, and this is, it was a, you know, mess up because his last is Kabutops and it can't run, it can't use Waterfall because, you know, it's in Sun and uh, that's going to do nothing. So he has to Stone Edge and, uh, well, luckily with minus two, then the Tina O can't KO it either. Even an Earthquake is probably going to come up short depending on its investment. He Outrages, comes up, uh, you know, comes up short. So he has to hit Stone Edge and he misses. <laughs> so, I mean, that was a haxy game, but uh, Joey, you know, acknowledged, yeah, he, he should have just stayed in with Kyogre at that point and, uh, and won with Kabutops, uh, cleanly. Because then, you know, you stay in with Kyogre, and if, and, uh, then Tina O Shadow Sneaks, and then you go to Kabutops, and you Waterfall, and then you Groudon, and you Dragon Claw, and game's over. Uh, so, but, I mean, it happens, and it gives us a game three. So, uh, yeah, the, the hacks early on, I mean, that definitely bit. It looked like Joey had a big advantage with the, you know, uh, Dialga into Scarf Kyogre, into Kabutops, into Groudon thing. Uh, but, you know, things happen. And uh, the end, well, we, we have a game three, if nothing else. So, let us go to it. Titar lead, Tentacruel lead. Uh, if this is a bulky T-Tar, it can eat two Hydros from Tenta easily, and, you know, get up some rocks. And Tenta can't exactly suicide spin on it easily, because T-Tar can repeatedly put up rocks as Tenta goes down to sand, assuming it attacks it on the first turn with Payback, which is going to do a ton, even to uh, the Tenta Cruels that run some defense investment. Uh, so, it depends on the sets here. So, Benbit wants no part of this, and goes to Garchomp on the T-Spikes, uh, I guess he wants to get Chomp in before the T-Spike go down. T-Spikes go down, and uh, it's a good idea, but it's not going to get him anywhere. I mean, even if Joey didn't have like the best Garchomp answer possible in Lugia, then you know things like the Tentacruel's often paired with like Bronzong and like the Scarf Kyogres and stuff. Then they're going to make sure Bron Garchomp generally doesn't get too far. Not that it couldn't, but you know it could potentially. But yeah, uh, he goes for an EQ, just trying to feel out Joey's team, and in comes Lugia. And uh, now Lugia is going to not mind T-Tar coming in as much because it's going to be poor. I mean, even if it's Lum, then, you know, you switch out. You know, T-Tar is generally not going to... Lead T-Tar is generally not focused on pursuing as much. I mean, how can it? It has to focus on lead matchups and getting up rocks. And even those two are hard without, you know, lumping Pursuit into the mix. Uh, so, yeah, you can generally Ice Beam pretty freely. But Joey decides to double switch and feel out the switch, you know, to a steal. Maybe you can get down a second layer of T-Spikes. That might be helpful. And uh, he gets a Scizor, so nicely, that's nice. I mean, Scizor isn't really threatening to Lugia instantly, but uh, it could potentially, like, sit on Lugia. It's more about, you know, preventing Lugia from toxicing stuff and ice beaming stuff. 
and you get a slow U-turn into something else. I mean, if it's Choice Band, then, you know, you could potentially get worn down, but if you're Lefty, then you're just going to devour it all day. So here comes Tentacruel. It's going to just uh, go for a Hydro, in fact, not even a second layer. He just wants to start spreading out some damage. He wants to feel out the Scizor's EV spread. So uh, that is smart, and now we will see just how bulky that Scizor is. All right, so 41. So Okay, so it's uh, d definitely got some nice special defense investment. Now, the U-turn, that does not do banded damage at all. So uh, it's definitely going to be some sort of support set. Uh, so here comes Dialga with an extra G, and it's probably going to get up rocks. If it has rocks, if it's not on T-Tar, that would be cool if it wasn't on T-Tar. Uh, because that would mean we are seeing an all-out attacking lead tar, which you don't see a lot of. And uh, but of course, you know, not having you know not having rocks on Diago also makes it very threatening. So either way, uh, Joey decides to scout out the set. Uh, goes for another layer of T spikes. Uh, as it gets, so that was a, that was really nicely measured. You know, he hydros if the scissor stays in. He gets some good damage on it, and he can probably T spike on most other things. If not, no big deal. Uh, because Tentacruel is so fast, he gets to scout out movesets, see if something's like this. Is, is, he can see if something like this Diaga is scarfed. Now he's not going to be able to keep these rocks off forever, unless uh, Ben Bay decides to just KO him here. But no, he just Dragon Pulses, put him, him into low range, now he's going to rocks again. Because uh, it's sand, so Tentacruel is going to go down. So uh, Tentacruel just goes for an Icy Wind, uh, putting the slowing the Diaga down. I don't know if that's going to come of any use, but he goes for Hydro, just chipping it as much as he can before going down, as uh, Ben Bay just goes for rocks to ensure he gets them. So, here comes Kyogre. So that's never a great sign when Kyogre is coming into Dialga. He goes for Calm Mind, which is, I mean, even if you don't get Thunder Parrot, then a lot of these Dialgas are running Roar, and they're specially defensive, so they're not taking a ton of damage. Like, we've seen this... Uh, all, a lot already like these t-spike teams like they're really really effective but like simple bulky dialgas can give them a lot of grief uh so kyogre protects and scouts the roar and uh for those who don't know roar does not go through protect this gen as you just saw uh yeah i, I wasn't crazy when they made that change in gen 6 anyway so uh he just goes for an ice beam rather than calm minding more so smart now he could have gone for a water move which i think would have done you know roughly the same, I, I yeah, uh, well, it depends on what the water move is. I, I don't know if Surf does more, and I assume he's running Surf if he's that, but, yeah, no, no yeah, Surf does more, I'm not crazy, okay. So, yeah, he could have gone for Surf, but, you know, uh, the Diaga is not going to be able to make a move because it gets frozen. Yeah, so, uh, that's, that's pretty rough. Well, okay, no, th that's why he went for Ice Beam over the extra damage of Surf, to try and freeze the Dialga, <laughs> as, he, uh, as you see here, when he goes for Surf the next time. So, I mean, playing to his odds, I, I mean, I, I can respect it, as much as, uh, as unlucky as it is for uh, Benbei, obviously. And now, with the Dialga, you know, being put out of commission so brutally, then it's not likely that a lot of... Uh, Joey, you know, makes the most of it now that the Dialga is going to be in KO range, and he protects for extra health, so nicely done there. Attention to the details. But yeah, it's not likely that uh, Benbei is going to have a ton of... Uh, can my music be keep playing, please? Yeah, it's not likely that Benbei is going to have you know have a team packed with Kyogre answers at this point. So, uh, he could... Joe, if he wanted to really be stingy, then he could protect here for... Just go back up to full, just in case it's Band Chomp or something. I mean, it would kind of be silly if you give him a free SD, but... SD here would be crazy. But then again, you don't really need to go for the protect, so you can probably just attack. And he doesn't, and EQ doesn't do very much. So I think that was an SD chomp, because otherwise, he, if he was Scarf, he would have gone for Outrage. And uh, SD chomp without Outrage. So SD chomp, EQ, D Claw, probably sub. If it's alongside T Tar, you want to go for some sub Sand Veil fun. So yeah, uh, any forfeits, because Guard Chomp is. Um, yeah, that's. Uh, can't really blame him. I mean, we don't know what the last were, but against a Call My Protect Kyogre with your main check down and T-Spikes down at that, then it's going to be brutal. So, that was a really back-and-forth series. Joey probably should have taken it home in, in two. I mean, there was hacks all across that series. But, uh, you know, nice nice play and nice teams from both sides. And uh, Joey, 
I assume you've seen this because his channel is just a bit bigger than mine. But he did a video of uh, not only his perspective on the games, but his perspective when building his teams. And I think that's really valuable, and I really appreciate that. So I encourage you to go check that out. So, uh, yeah, that's it for this one. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you next time.